Hi, I'm Heather Hopkins, a Research Director for the platform, and I'm joined by John Greenwood, Editor of Corporate Advisor. Hello. We wanted to um, have a, just a, a quick conversation about the uh, new pension flexibilities. They've been, you know, we recently find ourselves in the midst of this massive revolution, and we've published some research and are going to be publishing research throughout the year on the pension changes. And, and so, John, what are some of the, the early signs, what are some of the things that we've been seeing in the past couple of weeks? Well, I think it's fair to say that the providers have managed to deal with the uh, early uh, call volumes quite well. The massive deluge that some had predicted hasn't completely happened. They've been stretched, but the, it sounds like they've been able to, to deal with it. The system hasn't fallen over. Mm. What we've also found is that uh, there's been quite a lot of well, people settling their selling their benefits online standard life uh, in the first said in the first day I think or day and a half of the of the new freedoms they said that a thousand of the 4,000 people that contacted them actually settled their benefits online went through the guidance process and were able to achieve everything they wanted to do online okay. uh, we've seen a bit of a variation between providers in the amount of time these are talking about direct clients rather than advised clients uh, the amount of time uh, that they are taking to deal with customers, go through the guidance, go through the, uh, the, the second, so-called second line of defence to mm -hmm. consumer protections. Um, again, Standard said they spent about 30, 30 minutes per person. Agon were nearer seven or eight minutes per person. And I don't know if that's because of a different type of customer getting in contact or a different approach, but we'll probably see um, that evening out between pro providers going forward as, uh, as they work out how to be more efficient, but maybe they've got different strategies of what they're trying to achieve uh, with their customers. Okay. In the report we published in February, we talked about some figures that Royal London had shared on um, what they had seen post-budget in terms of, of use of annuities and access to cash. What, what, are we, what do you expect to see in terms of the extent to which people will be taking this money in cash, the pensions in cash? Sure. Well, I, that is the $64 billion question, mm. almost literally, right. uh, in, in that how much money is going to come out of the industry and go into the economy, into DIY holidays and uh, sports cars. Uh, yeah, Royal London were very public with their figures uh, in the, the period following the 2014 budget, when when the both when when the pension freedoms were announced, but also when there was a massive relaxation in what the amount that you could take out through so-called trivial commutation, taking out small pots raised up to thirty thousand pounds, etc. Um, they saw uh, their non-advised clients previously 26 percent of them would would be taking cash. That has, that shot up to 59 percent. So that's nearly two thirds of all of their non-advised clients were just taking the lot out. Wow. Some of that will have had uh, guaranteed annuity rates on it, which is uh, obviously uh, maybe not been in their best interest to do so. The second line of defence should slow some of that down. However, that is quite a lot of money coming out of mm. the industry. The, uh, nobody's published yet, uh, it's early days uh, as we speak, no one's published the exact amounts that have been coming out, but uh, anecdotal evidence is that withdrawals are going to be significant. I've heard a couple of mentions of feedback from providers whereby uh, customers on the telephone have said yes, 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 we've gone through the, the mm -hmm. guidance and the providers aren't 100% sure that they have done, but they're just focused on getting the cash, even if it means uh, a higher tax bill than they were expecting. And that, that the Prof the customers that are taking that access to cash, it tends to be the smaller pots, is that right? Is that oh, what we're seeing? Yeah, it tends to be the smaller pots and also the non-advised pots, so the non-advised right. um, non clients I refer to in the Royal London, that, yeah, they, they were the, uh, the, the, the people who aren't seeing an IFA. The people seeing IFAs, there's far less change uh, in, uh, in their approach, mm -hmm. but some of them, some of those two will be, will be accessing. Money. The other area uh, where more, probably more in the advised market is uh, the transition from people moving their money from defined benefits to defined contribution, which they obviously can now do with far greater flexibility, apart from public sector people for whom it stopped in April. Uh, we early signs there from advisors and providers is that we're not seeing, and from schemes, is that we're not seeing, again, a deluge, but we are seeing some activity. Mm 
it's too early to say whether that is going to build into uh, the many, many billions of pounds that people are predicting. However, uh, the, there are sound reasons why a lot of people might want to see, uh, might want to get hold of their money and uh, a small monthly income compared to actually uh, a five or six figure sum, uh, the actual utility of that money to people might, might persuade them that, that they want to do that. Another logjam there is going to be uh, the access to advice, however, because they're going to need an advisor to do that, to help to do that, certainly for, for bigger funds. So, um, and there's caution amongst advisors about signing off DB to DC transfers, not surprisingly because of the regulatory risks. <coughs> and, and, simply, and simply, if everybody in the country who could benefit from it wants to do it, there, there probably aren't enough advisors out there. Mm. Speaking of advisors, the uh, mm. the guys on the front line of these changes, uh, what um, what are they what are they looking at? What products are interesting to advisors? What are they recommending in drawdown? Well, it, it's an interesting one because I think a lot of the headlines have been about what non-advisors, which obviously by definition is not advisors mm. are doing, um, and how that's going to work for the, the the mass market of people who formerly would have just tumbled into an annuity. For the advised market, largely. Uh, th th the tools for drawdown have always existed and they uh, don't really need to be changed that much. Uh, a lot of products have been launched at funds with the words retirement income attached to them but they're mm. judged up versions of what was there previously. Um, so there's a mood amongst advisors that well actually we've been doing drawdown for years anyway, um, we know how to do this with people. Uh, but for those in the smaller pots where they're, where they're trying to do it on a more economic basis, uh, the, the approach has been to say, well yeah there are these new products coming out, maybe we can put people in them. They're liking the idea of uh, multi-asset drawdown, certain groups of advisors are. There's a rump of advisors who don't want to touch them at all and they're sort of purist, we are either going to use a DFM or we're going to you know, do the asset allocation ourselves. But then there's another sort of close to the high street group, I suspect, who are looking at the uh, multi-asset or multi-manager even uh, approaches that are being launched. Probably the biggest area, the feedback we got in, in the report was uh, the biggest area for where they see potential for innovation uh, is in the third way annuity uh, mm -hmm. sector. So there you've got, you know, it's. It, on the face of it, promises everything that you want, access to your money, uh, a guaranteed income for life or for the period of the guarantee, uh, potential if you want to pass it on to your children through death benefits because it's not been annuitized, uh, and the potential for fun, for upside on the, uh, if the if the economy does well. So advisors identified third way annuities as the one area where they saw there was real scope for new product development but they said they hadn't seen it yet, and that's probably not surprising. The, the regulatory um, landscape hasn't settled down yet. We've got the election just a few weeks away. It's not going to settle down for some time yet, uh, and we might see more after the summer. Yeah, interesting. Everybody wants it all, right? Uh, so, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Well, it's, you know, if you promise everyone everything, as we'll see with the election, absolutely. will they believe it? Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you for joining us. If you're interested in more information on our retirement funding series, do get in touch, um, platform.co.uk. Our next reports that we have coming up are a comparison of drawdown pricing on platforms and the functionality on those platforms. Um, we're also doing a report on retirement options in the US, what's worked in that market and what might be relevant to the UK market. And we're fielding a bit of consumer research looking at how consumers define retirement and how they plan to fund their retirement. Thanks very much.